Hey guys, I am standing next to Interstate 80 right behind me. I'm at the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains. And the reason I'm standing here is I want to talk about temperature changes. Now as these folks are heading up the hill here toward the Donner Summit, that's about 7,000 feet. It's going to be colder up there in the mountains. As a general rule, it's about three and a half degrees for that normal air temperature change as you go up. Now there's another one too that I want to talk about, and that's expanding air. It's called adiabatic or adiabatic, however you want to pronounce it. And uh, as the air is forced up the mountains, it has nowhere else to go but up, right? Let's think of a storm or something like that coming in, and uh, that parcel of air is forced up. You know, um, sometimes you'll buy like a potato chip bag at the store here down in the foothills, and by the time it gets up into the, you know, the Sierra Nevadas, it's, it's all puffed up. So that's actually air expanding, and you can see that with a potato chip bag. Uh, the funny thing is, if you were to stick a thermometer inside of that potato chip bag, it would actually be colder than the outside. And that's called adiabatic. Uh, and that uh, rate is about five and a half degrees, 5.6, depending on what number you're gonna use as the air expands. So it gets cooler quicker. And that explains why we get clouds in the mountains. As that air is forced up, we'll get clouds, you know, 3,000 feet. You'll see the trees change. It's a lot lusher. You'll see uh, more snow and more rain there in the winter time. So let's go take a look at how we calculate this on the whiteboard. All right, let's take a look at the whiteboard. How do we calculate temperature variations as you go up the hill when you're heading up to Donner Summit? Remember, we have two flavors, and we have the normal air temperature as you go up. It's about three and a half degrees, and then you have this thing called adiabatic lapse rate. And the lapse rate means it's consistently changing, either decreasing or increasing as you head up. So let's take a look now at um, a few things I have on the board first. Uh, I have the elevations here. I've written them down on the left. 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and so on. Donner Summit's at about 7,000 feet. And uh, we're also gonna have a base temperature of about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, 80 degrees it was about what it was like. Stand next to the freeway here. Um, and then I put these rates down too that we're gonna use here. Dry adiabatic lapse rate, that means there's no clouds, it's dry. So today, pretty much going up the summit, there were no clouds there, so you'd use this rate. It's about 5.6 we're gonna use for this exercise. And there's one other thing I did not mention when I was outside, and that's if clouds form, we're gonna use something called the wet adiabatic lapse rate. And I'm gonna explain that here in a minute. That rate is lower at 3.2 degrees. And I've written it on the board here, and if you're doing a lab, it should be written down for you. Hopefully you don't have to memorize that. But if you do, it's not a big deal. So there's three different rates to use. So let's do this one real quick here. If we're at 2,000 feet and we're at 80 degrees and we go up, let's say, 1,000 feet, it's gonna drop three and a half degrees. If we go up 2,000 feet, it's gonna drop seven degrees. If we go up to, let's say, 6,000 feet, uh, another way to do it is you just say 6,000, subtract 2,000, that equals 4,000 feet, divide that by 1,000, and you get four units, you know, four units of 1,000. Then you just multiply four times three and a half. It's pretty easy, that's 14, right? You can grab your calculator, and then 14 subtract 80 is 66 degrees. So in that box, actually, down here in 6,000, it's 66 degrees. I can just modify that. At 7,000, I've got to subtract three and a half from that, right? Because it gets a little bit cooler. Okay, so we're at 62 and a half here. Okay, 62 and a half degrees. Uh, and you know, let's just double check me. So I've got this crazy large calculator here. Uh, and what I could do is just double check me as we're going from 7,000, we're going up 5,000 feet. It says five units times that rate. The rate we're using is 3.5. That's 17, and then I'll take that away from 80. 62.5, so I double check myself. Now that's the normal lapse rate. Let's move on to the adiabatic. Now again, that potato chip bag expands. Let's face it, if a storm's coming in, it can't go down below the mountain, it can't go through the mountain, it has to go up over the mountain. It expands and forces this parcel of air to expand just like the potato chip bag and so that's different you have to know it's different it really is and so we're gonna use a different rate that's the adiabatic lapse rate so let's do that we're gonna draw the arrows these blue arrows as air expanding and rising I'm gonna call it rising air temperature and we're gonna calculate it right here now that's the Donner summit it's at 7,000 feet we're gonna use a rough estimate subtract 2 
thousand, five thousand, so that's five times five point six, because I've done this before, that's twenty-eight. So we just say eighty, subtract twenty-eight, that's fifty-two degrees. So right here, if you were to if a parcel of air, fifty-two degrees, a parcel of air. Uh, would then cool to 52 degrees. Now if the dew point, let's say we're at 52, watch out, you're going to start to get clouds. The dew point is where clouds form. And that's really important to figure this stuff out if you're an aviator, for example. You don't want to fly into the clouds. You see the normal air temperature, they actually have it over the radio or you can look it up online. Uh, you can call a telephone number uh, to get the local airport weather. And if those two temperatures, the dew point and the normal temperature, are really close, then you know you're likely to have clouds. Okay, it's dangerous. All right, now I want to do something called the wet adiabatic, and this is um, physics, so we can't really change this. There's actually two flavors of adiabatic, and so let's put some clouds here. So let's raise our number here. That number is going to be higher, actually. It's going to be different. I'll just say that right now. Let's use blue. Blue is a nice color for clouds. Okay, so we've got clouds, and let's say clouds start at 5,000 feet. Okay, right here, and they start to form, and they go all the way up to the summit. Okay, right there, so there's all my clouds. Go around that box. All right, so it starts at 5,000. Here's my little tick marks, and it goes up to 7,000. So the clouds are going for about 2,000 feet. And 2,000 feet subtract 1,000 is two, two times. Now, what rate are we using? There's clouds. We use uh, wet for clouds. Just remember that. Okay, we have this other flavor called wet. Think of that as just clouds. So 3.2 times 2 is 6.4, right? 6.4. Easy. And now we, so I can even write that down. If you're getting confused here, this is minus 6.4, and we're just going from here to here. Okay? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to subtract. Now, I have to tell you I made a mistake here, but maybe that's a good thing. I have to actually figure out two separate flavors here. Okay? If you've noticed, I'm erasing the tree here. That this has no clouds. This from 2,000 to 5,000 has no clouds. That's not wet. So this I have to actually figure out separately. There's two separate calculations. So uh, this is 2 to 5, that's 3,000, or 3 times 5.6. So I'm going to do that right now. Times 5.6 and 16.8. So it's minus 16.8 here. 16.8. All right, so the first step I've done I figured out how much it's cooling, and I want to figure out this box here. A couple ways I could do it. I could just figure out my temp right here if I wanted to. Uh, but since I already did both of these, let's just add this. So 16.8 plus 6.4 equals 23.2. So this total is 23.2, and I got to subtract that from 80, right? Or take it away from 80, however you want to say it, so I'm grammatically correct. And that is. 56.8. So it is 56.8 if you were to be in the clouds up here and measure that temperature because we're using this lapse rate. And we used two flavors in conclusion. We used this one and we used that one. And let's do a bonus here. One more. Let's go. Let's. I've got a box over here too. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but let's figure out what the temp is at 2000. It's actually going to be higher than 80. That's what I find amazing. I do this in the classroom, and it does explain why it's drier on the back side, why the clouds kind of burn off. You know, we're going to be looking at the mid-80s over here, but let's just figure it out. So we know that we're going from 7 to 2, that's 5,000 going down, or 5 units, and you got to know we add now. Okay, the air is getting hotter, so we're going to add temperature here. It's 28, got that memorized. So we just say um, 56.8 plus 28. And it comes out to 84.8. Okay, 84.8, that is hotter than over here where we started. And we figured that out exactly using what we call the lapse rates, the normal lapse rate and the adiabatic lapse rates. So try it yourself, and I hope you understand a little bit better. Uh, next time you're out there driving around, you see those clouds evaporating on the backside. Uh, you might get an idea of what that's all about, compressed air, and then also when you see those clouds when you're driving up into the hills and all of a sudden you're at, let's say, 5,000 feet and those clouds start to form, that's the adiabatic expansion going on.